Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome back to From the Depths. More specifically, another armor tutorial because we've still got a few more of these things to go because armor is such a dense subject in From the Depths. So today we are going to be covering uh, the two chemical penetrator uh, or armor busting uh, shell components that are found with advanced cannons and how to defend against them. Uh, heat and Hesh, or rather Hesh and Heat, because that's the order I'm going to be talking about um, then. So we're going to start with Hesh, and like, uh, these two types of damage are... I was about to say they're both uh, unique to APS as a weapon system, but that's not true, because you can get Heat and Missiles as well. Uh, squash, squash Heads, or Hesh Shells, are unique uh, to advanced cannons. There's no, no other weapon system in the game uh, has this. And you find it here, and as the tooltip says, concentrates explosives placed directly behind it into a shockwave that can create interior spalling and destroy chunks of vehicle walls. So if you go here, and if you keep an eye on the damage numbers in the bottom right, this goes up when you stack HE warheads behind it. And we're just going to stick that with that for now for testing purposes. So, uh, squash heads, uh, hash stands for... Uh, high Explosive Squash Head, so that's the, that's the SH in Hesh, is Squash Head. Uh, it's modeled on real-life um, anti-armor shells that um, are not used much these days, uh, but in From the Depths they're one of the more uh, meta shells, and you basically, if you're designing any kind of craft um, for the late game of, of campaigns or higher difficulties, uh, you can't ignore it, like, because it is, it will ruin your day if you're not ready for it. So it does three kinds of damage. Uh, it does regular explosive damage, because it is an explodey shell. It does thump damage, similar to hollow point shells, so hollow point is over here, converts it into impact damage, and um, thump damage is also done by collision, so if your ship collides um, with a uh, with a piece of land or with another ship, um, thump is kind of the is the damage type that is done there too, and but it also does spalling based damage. So spalling is the fragments which are created um, when a squash head shockwave passes through armor. So it hits the block of armor, it sends the thump through it, and then on the other side, it causes bits of the armor to flake off into uh, fragments which do additional damage. So. Uh, Quite a nasty combination. So, the formula for this is, um, as the tooltip says, total damage of frag spawned is this value divided by a square root of the sum of the armor blocks passed. What this means is that um, uh, uh, Hesh shells do better against thinner armor than against thicker armor. They can reach very, very far uh, into deep layers of armor but they do better against thinner armor than uh, thicker. So, uh, total damage of frag spawned in this value divided by square root of the sum of armor has passed. So, for example, the square root of a metal block is... Um, uh, metal blocks have an armor value of 40, square root of 40 is 6.32. So, through one layer of metal, it is this number, uh, which is about 13,000, uh, divided by 6.32, and that is the resulting... Um, total damage done by the fragment spawned on the other side. And so if it's um, if it's then uh, twice as much uh, metal, it does less, and so on and so forth. And basically, for, to give you a live demonstration of how this works, over here we have a lovely section of armor, which is just a layer of metal, uh, which is, well, the armor, and some wooden blocks, which are acting as the squishy thing directly behind that armor. And there you go. So Hesh loves armor schemes like this because it's just you have a high, uh, you have a blocks with high armor class, uh, an air gap, and then something with lousy armor right behind it. Hesh eats this like no one's business. And um, you might be forgiven for thinking at this point that this is an APS tutorial rather than an armor tutorial, but bear with me because um, you need to talk about the mechanics of these shells in order to know how to build armor that counters them. So, um, the first thing you've got to know is that, well, for one thing, thicker armor layers um, do better against Hesh, so 
we have that and it just uh, got through a lump of wood no problem so, but we go here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty and twenty one I guess so this is a ridiculously thick lump of armor and you'll basically never see this because at this point um, it's either going to be too much of the cost of the vehicle as an armor or it'll just melt your CPU so um, that's no good but eh. go over here and you will see uh, didn't even destroy that one wooden block because um, the total sum of this armor is quite a lot. It's like, what was it? It's 21 times 40. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, it's 21 uh, times 40 divided by 6.32, which is still a big number. Or no, it is... No, 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 no. Hang on. It's that damage number over there uh, divided by the sum of the square root of the sum of this so it reduces it considerably so there is your first defense is just have thicker layers of armor uh, but the second defense is perhaps far the more practical one is something called spall liner so in real life uh, this takes the form of just uh, padding on the inner layer of armor which pretty much I'm uh, pretty much all modern armored vehicles uh, have something like that so Hesh is mostly um, obsolete these days, at least for engaging uh, armored vehicles. It's still good against things like um, bunkers or like unarmored targets because it just sends a shockwave straight through it and um, uh, fragments are still spawned because you can't exactly uh, put um, squishy wallpaper all on the inside of a bunker. There's uh, maintenance costs with that and people generally don't do that. Also, it's just generally good for taking down buildings. But um, in From the Depths, it takes the form of... It's just you... Uh, you just take advantage of the fact that Hesh... Um, the AP of the fragments that it creates... Is based on whatever block it spawns from. So here... Um, just double checking the formula again. It goes over here. So spawning, base damage. AP of the frag spawned is double the armor of the block the spawning is generated from. So you can take advantage of this. So here we have a double layer of metal. And we're just going to replace this with metal as well. Like so. And we're going to go here. I'm going to test that. And... So we've done about just shy of 1,000 kinetic damage there uh, because uh, the fragments spawning here have more than enough AP to do full damage to these metal beams. In fact, uh, this metal beam right here is um, lost over 30% health. And this is not a particularly strong Hesh shell, by the way. It's got no um, uh, high explosive bore hits behind it, making it stronger. It's just a squash head and nothing else. Um, so... Um, but what we would do with Hesh in mind is that you would replace uh, this final layer of armor uh, with a, uh, a actually a weaker beam. So in this case, we're going to go with wood because the armor class of wood is very, very low compared to metal. It's got an armor of 8 as opposed to an armor of 40. So even when Hesh fragments spawn from this with an AP value of 16, that's nowhere near enough to do full damage uh, to metal. So let's fire again. And let's see here. 69%. Oh, darn it. Sorry, we need to do that again because I wasn't looking at the damage numbers. So you see, it's just over 500 kinetic damage uh, done up there. And uh, that is considerably less. So this really uh, starts stacking up once you get proper, uh, properly powerful Hesh warheads being lobbed at you. And it means that um, generally a good armor scheme is a double letter, le letter layer of strong blocks um, with a, a more squishy layer just behind it, an air gap, and then there's another layer. It's a good all-purpose armor scheme. And this doesn't have to be wood, although wood is... Uh, the very best spall liner you can get because it is the structural block with the uh, lowest uh, armor value. So, and by the way, uh, wood is definitely the best um, spall liner you get. I've had people try and tell me that things like glass or uh, rubber is better. 
and they are wrong for two reasons. Firstly, like uh, these days, glass actually has a higher uh, AC than uh, than wood. It didn't used to. Um, but the main problem is is that um, hash fragments only spawn from structural blocks. So, and I mean true structural blocks. So, um, what that basically means is is that it only spawns from uh, wood. Uh, wood, metal, stone, lightweight alloy, lead, and heavy armor. So, it does not spawn from anything else. Oh, and reinforced wood as well. Almost forgot to mention that. So, what that means is that if you have glass here... Let's just fully repair this. Just so we have everything below, uh, everything here and get rid of this. For consistency. Um, something interesting happens. So you'll notice that it ripped straight through the glass and then proceeded to damage this block right behind it uh, to quite a significant degree, actually. Um, and that is because uh, Hesh shockwaves don't pass through uh, non-structural blocks, as in blocks that cannot give armor stacking. Which means the fragments spawn right behind this glass, tear straight through it, and then damage the block behind it. And that is no good. And the exact same thing happens uh, with rubber. So we go here, rubber. Logically, rubber would should make a good spore liner. Um, actually, to be fair, uh, rubber behaves exactly the same way spore liner does in real life. It's just that from the depths works a little bit differently from real life. And um, there, yep, there goes that rubber block. It failed in its mission, and we've got a damage block over here once again. So that's no good. So that's basically it for Hesh. It's just in the uh, wind armoring. Uh, th uh, you want a th layer of thick armor, but the final layer should have a lower uh, armor class than the next block along, after an air gap. And that is uh, the most reliable way to deal uh, with Hesh. So, moving right along, uh, over to Heat. Now, uh, this is uh, called Shape Charge Heads on this, and just like um, Squash Heads, this has a real-life equivalent. Heat Shells... Um, are actually still widely used simply because it is a form of kinetic penetrator. I'm not uh, tank nerdy enough to explain the specifics of how it works, uh, but in the the in-game description is uses immediately connected explosive warheads to blast a stream of superheated armor piercing copper into the target. And the important thing is is that uh, that people have told me repeatedly is that it's not really a molten charge. It's more like an explosion that just kind of weirdly morphs its way um, through armor and then kind of explodes on the other side. So, just like Hesh, it is made stronger by connecting uh, HE warheads directly behind it, which we're not going to go with because we need to keep the damage numbers low so you can see the difference between them. And you'll see here there's a interesting things right here. Firstly, frag count is... Um, uh, in this case, it's 11 and about 700 damage per fragment. And then there's the penetration metric. So, here is the slider to determine which one, because you can uh, lower the penetration metric in order to increase the damage of the fragments, or you can have a higher penetration metric uh, for lower fragment damage. I almost always uh, go with higher penetration factors, because that is what um, heat is useful for. It's just reaching through... Um, thick layers of armor and uh, tickling uh, to death whatever's on the other side. So, yeah, like, um, in a similar manner to Hash, heat is only uh, triggered, or it can only penetrate uh, true structural blocks. So, over here, we're just gonna go, well, let's just repair this for consistency, and we go here, and we're gonna have our squishy target behind there, and we're gonna go here, Heat does look really cool when it goes off, by the way. So you see there, it just sailed straight through those uh, metal blocks, damaged the wood behind it. Uh, but if you, say, do this with rubber, one, two, three, and you do the same thing, you'll notice that, bang, it actually rips straight through the rubber and then damaged, wait a minute, wait a minute, did I clear this? I didn't clear this. I did it again! Darn it. Darn it. Darn it. Is that a squash? Is that a heat shell? Yes. Good. 
Let's do that again. That was silly. That was dumb. I have been up since 2 a.m. Right, okay, so that's the actual <laughs> heat stream. So, yeah, so uh, 1.5 thousand kinetic damage, whistles straight through uh, 2 meters of metal, destroys wooden beams. Very similar uh, to Hesh so far, and just like Hesh, it um, can only truly penetrate uh, structural blocks. And if it hits a non-structural block, it uh, will trigger the fragments. Ta-da! Straight through. So, yeah, so... You have to decide which one you kind of want. I tend to prefer high penetration metric, and... Uh, the formula for this penetration metric is... Uh, each meter of armor reduces the metric by square root of the armor value. Uh, if metric reaches zero before the fragments are released, the blast is mitigated. So, in a weird way, Hesh actually can reach further through armor than Heat can, because regardless of the size of the Hesh shell, it... Um, it can penetrate a maximum of 50 blocks, and I've actually tested this, and, like, but uh, heat is dependent on the penetration metric, so, uh, for example, uh, to break through 2 meters of metal, you need a penetration metric of at least 12, because the square root of 40 is 6.32, actually you need a penetration metric of about 12.6, thank you past me for not doing the math correctly, actually I hope present me is doing the math correctly because math is not my strong suit. So yeah, so this is overkill for penetrating two layers of metal, but if you're penetrating things like heavy armor, which honestly is what uh, heat is really good for, because heavy armor uh, just has, well, it has so much armor and health uh, that um, other means of defeating armor tend not to work quite as well, unless you have very big shells, but you can just easily have a a 100 millimeter or less uh, he heat shell that can uh, poke through uh, heavy armor, and that's really good. And uh, I actually just remembered that I have the penetration metrics of armor right here. So these are what it takes to penetrate through one uh, meter of armor, uh, respectively. So uh, remember to put this on screen, future me, otherwise you're going to look very silly. Uh, for wood, you need 2.83. Uh, penetration metric. For stone, you need 4. For lead, you need 3.16. For reinforced wood, you need 4.9. For metal, you need 6.32. Uh, alloy, you need 5.92. And for heavy armor, you need 7.75. So, uh, this particular heat shell, um, if we jack it up back to 500 uh, millimeters, can go through, let's see, about 5... Uh, five or s maybe six meters of heavy armor, which is um, something we should test right now, actually. Let's go here, repair all. And let's go here, and one, two, three, one, two, three, three, four, five, six. All right, so this should penetrate, and if it doesn't, I've done my math wrong, and that's okay. Ta da! And it should not be able to penetrate one more layer. Let's go over here and have a look at that again. Oh, it can still do it. Uh, one more layer. Huh? There we go. So that's a... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this particular heat shell, which is not very good, by the way, because um, it only has the shape charge head, it has no backing uh, high Swiss warheads, can get through seven layers of heavy armor, which is really, really strong. <laughs> like, trying to get through this with regular explosive or kinetic penetrators, uh, you'll, you'll be at it all day, for the most part. And, and this is actually the main advantage of heat over hash, is that... Uh, the damage of Hesh is reduced the more blocks it passes through, uh, but Heat isn't. Uh, this will do uh, exactly the same amount of fragment damage, um, whether it's passing through uh, seven layers of heavy armor or whether it's passing through just one. So, Heat is slightly better than Hesh at getting through thick layers of armor, like really chunky thick bits. And... Um, but heat also has um, actually quite a few ways uh, to counter it. So, the short version is air gaps are your best friend. 
So that is the short version, and if you're in a hurry, you could probably stop watching the video right there, but please don't, because um, I'm, <laughs> I'm lonely. That sounds weird. Anyway, so um, uh, that heat, uh, similar to hash, uh, heat is triggered on the first air gap it reaches. So if we just modify this, and we know the heat uh, round can penetrate that, and it goes here, it goes here, and bang. Uh, did basically no damage because there's an air gap there, and um, it can't jump that air gap. Back in the day, just as a side note, um, heat, sh uh, heat streams um, could penetrate air gaps, um, assuming their penetration metric was high enough. Like, it took an awful lot of penetration metric to get through thin air, uh, but it could do it. Not so the case anymore. They fixed that, thank goodness, because back in the day, heat was an absolute terror. It was so strong. But uh, now it is uh, somewhat more reasonable, uh, but still definitely something you should be a little bit afraid of, because there's many situations in which uh, spaced armor is just not feasible, like on the tops of turrets, for instance. Uh, but thankfully, there's other ways uh, to uh, defend against this. And one of them is that... Um, as we saw, heat is immediately triggered uh, when the stream hits a block that is non-structural, and there are a few examples of that. And we're going to start with the one that's terrible first, so let's go over here. Because, of course, um, those of you who know... Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Okay, phew. I was worried I had deleted something important there because I had mirror mode the wrong way. Okay, what were we talking about? Alright, so. So, so, so. Um, ERA. So, in uh, the scary world that is real life, uh, ERA uh, is explosive reactive armor, and it, basically the premise is uh, when it gets hit uh, by a heat stream, it triggers and it stops it. So, it explodes outward and it just stops the stream from penetrating any further, and is far more resource and space and weight efficient than just having incredibly thick layers of armor which is why these uh, these kind of square blocks that you see on the sides of modern tanks um they tend to be lumps of era mixed with ceramic and just all kinds of uh, interesting and exotic things because uh it's, it's very high tech these days um so in real life it works very well in from the depths it is basically useless like i have tried to find uses for era and I've had many people tell me various different things, and its most widely uh, used application is purely decoration, because uh, the model looks cool, and that's it. It is not good armor. Like, I will stick by the statement, and um, for one thing, it's single use. So an air gap in your armor is effective just so long as uh, the block uh, that the, keeps getting hit by the heat fragments is intact. And since uh, craft tend to move around a lot in the fight, that uh, tends to be quite a while, and especially if the, 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 the fragment catcher, so to speak, is something tough uh, like metal or heavy armor. It can take a lot of punishment. ERA is single use, and in order to use it again, you need to repair it. So, if we have here... Uh, something like, uh, let's have the squishy layer here, and we go here, and we go here, and actually, no, let's do this, and we have ERA right here. Do, 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 do. So that's, this is the squishy thing we want to protect, and it does shut it down uh, completely, to be fair. So it did 10 damage, it knocked off one ERA block, and that worked uh, just fine. Problem is, though, is that if you don't have repairs, or if your repair bots are busy being idiots repairing the wrong thing, uh, that exact line again, it just goes straight through again. And, um, yeah, that's a bit of a problem. And if you compare that, uh, just to, well, well, just to a regular air gap, which does take a little bit more volume, it's just, it's not, it's no contest, really, uh, which is more useful. So go here, one. Hello. Come on now. Don't make a fool of me now. Two. 
That's already, it's uh, taken a shot much better, and I haven't needed to repair anything. So, ERA is not as good against um, heat as just other, like, armor schemes. So, just, uh, it's not particularly good. Like, you can even uh, really get volume clever by doing something like this. Um, slopes and poles technically um, have air gaps with them. So, you can do stuff like... And this, this is not ideal because um, uh, this is very close and in order to dissipate the damage of uh, heat fragments, it really helps to spread out their damage a bit. So it actually helps to have a wider air gap. So it's like something like this uh, rather than what we had before. But for consistency, we're going to do this. And keeping in mind that uh, slopes have about half the health of uh, regular beams, so this might not work for the shell. It totally worked for that shell. And you can also do the same thing with poles. Uh, just be aware that poles are uh, apparently a little bit finicky. Sometimes they work for this, sometimes they don't, because um, at specific angles, they can kind of act as solid uh, blocks. I just got texted. So, yeah. And let's see if this does what I want it to. Okay, that did do what I wanted to. Already, so much better than ERA. And, uh, so yeah, so, uh, I have been told that ERA has another use in that, well, you can see it in the tooltip. So we go here, explosive reactive armor will stop a heat warhead dead in its tracks, this is true, it does. It will also offer very significant protection from a targeted fragmentation strike. The armor is used in the process and must be repaired to be reused. And this is actually a structural block, like, if you uh, stick it behind another block, it will add more armor, which is okay, I guess. It has bugger all armor, though. Max structural armor boost is 0 0.6, as opposed to metal, which is plus 8, because it has lousy armor. And, um, so we can test that right here. So, uh, people have been telling me that uh, if you use frag shells, you can kind of stuff ERA, um, around, uh, the, uh, like around the turrets, which are filled with frag shells, and it can help stop uh, the frag shells from uh, just ruining your life if the turret gets destroyed. I was like, okay, well, we can uh, demonstrate this, like so, and we do this, and so I want you to take it, well, let's first do this without ERA, and keep an eye on the top right where the damage numbers are, so we're lobbing a big frag shell, bang, a 2.93 thousand uh, kinetic damage, that's uh, without uh, any protection, it's just the wood taking it. And now let us stick ERA here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and that's, that's actually 9, alright, so, 2.9k, that actually did more damage. Well, it did more damage uh, because there were more blocks in the way and it didn't destroy all of them. So, I think that means, like, it's actually really hard to tell whether ERA does anything because it's not a particularly strong block and it tends to get destroyed like this. But the main problem I have with the strategy is that, um, if you're sure you can put ERA there and yes, it does something, um, I've tested enough to confirm that, the problem is, is that um, one meter metal blocks cost and cost and weigh exactly the same, but have more health and armor, and actually do exactly the same kind of job uh, as ERA for dissipating fragments. So if we go here, and you'll see, bang, we didn't actually lose any uh, wood pieces there, like at all. So. You are actually better off for uh, dissipating uh, fragments. Uh, you are better off using ER, uh, just uh, single metal blocks rather than ERA, which is a little bit embarrassing because it means that ERA has basically no usefulness whatsoever. Boop. And like, and it's like if you're gonna use one meter metal blocks, you might as well use. Full, meter, full four meter beams because they have bonus health. They have 20% extra health uh, for the same volume. So if you do that, ta-da! And I can confirm uh, from watching my frag guns get blown up occasionally uh, that a more effective way 
to just um, stop uh, the shells from destroying like other things inside your craft, aside from the turret itself. Uh, that takes ejectors, that's a story for another day. Is just armor your turret. So instead of just having uh, your loaders be completely uh, unarmored, so if we go here, and here's just some loaders, and you just stick some, I don't know, some inputs there, for example. Just let's say this is a 3x3 three three thing. This is really um, hasty Tetris. So something uh, like this and um, the simple way to stop this from ruining everything around it is just on the turret itself stick armor because as we've just seen metal beams probably do the best job of like stopping fragments of well metal and heavy armor and other high uh, armor class blocks they do the best job of it like you don't need ERA for this and if you use um, ejectors, which I keep forgetting to do, and just use uh, emergency defusing, which is on the shell right here, and I will show you, I'll go over here, so emergency ejection defusing, you really don't even, you barely even need that, like, because you're just, when the auto loader gets destroyed, the shells get blocked out, and it just, just generally works better, so yeah, basically ERA is completely useless, and you should use it because it looks pretty like sad but true sad but true and ta -da, let's do that let's do that and let's do that and that's basically it but there's going to be a bonus note i'm going to touch on here uh, regarding uh, probably the most effective way to stop heat uh streams at this point and that is ducts and the reason I'm leaving this for last, and the reason this is kind of a side note, is because I'm getting the feeling this is an unintentional feature, and it's not actually supposed to work this way. I think it might be just an oversight. So, uh, ducts, in case you were unaware, uh, are in the air section, and they are used primarily uh, for armoring propulsion. So propellers, jets, and stuff like that, because it is a thick, chunky uh, lump, but it allows propulsion, and also, um, what else does it uh, let through? It could, it could also let engine exhaust uh, through it, um, which is very, very handy. And these things are just all around fantastic for numerous reasons. Uh, but one of their weirder properties is that they are technically not a structural block. Um, because, like, yeah, they're made of wood, they're made of metal, they're made of alloy, but they don't give armor stacking, and I suspect that the uh, an unintentional side effect of this is that heat cannot penetrate these things at all. So, uh, what do we have here? We have uh, the five thing. So, just um, for an example, you will see here we have the regular thing and we fire the heat shell. That was a frag shell. I do this all the time. Why do I do this? I should be Ashamed of myself, I have brought dishonor to my family. My family barely knows what I'm even doing. Uh, let's uh, try that again, shall we? Let's go here, clear clips, and repair everything. Ah, don't forget what's in your guns. So here, bang, that's what usually happens um, with a heat shell. But now I'm just going to replace uh, this, uh, this here metal duck, this here thing. Uh, with a metal duct. And... What happens? It stops. It stopped it completely. I can even uh, stick that duct right up against there. And... It stopped it dead. Like, it took a fair amount of damage. But still, it like, it stopped it completely. Pretty sure it's not supposed to do that. So... Like, by the time you're watching this, uh, this might have been fixed because I'm almost, I had not confirmed, I'm almost entirely sure that that is not meant to be how ducts interact with heat shells. Because that, uh, that feels like a bit of an oversight, because it just means that you can uh, spam a heavy armor ducts, which have really good armor and health, and you can just have armor schemes 
uh, like this. So you go here, go here, and um, they also stop uh, hash shells as well. So it's like here, 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 go here, and bang, stopped completely. And we just swap that out for a squash head, clear clips again, and once again, is the wood going to do anything? Nope, absolutely stopped dead. And that heavy armor duct is barely even touched. So, yeah, so that's an unintentional feature, and I get a sneaky feeling that uh, that's going to be fixed at some point. But that about sums up, um, I guess, the basics of heat and hash. And so, yeah, the absolute short answer is that air gaps or and uh, the occasional thing stuck in the air gap is your best friend, and so uh, I guess uh, air is your friend. You need it to breathe and you need it to, to fend against uh, chemical penetrators. So, on that note, thank you all so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like, it really helps. Uh, and there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters, and I will see you next time in From the Depths. And yes, there are going to be more armor tutorials uh, coming up. Farewell!